seriously and we take very seriously what the United Nations reports have said about support coming from across the border. So it's important to, to put an end to any or all support mutinies may receive. And it's important too that everyone cooperates to investigate uh, in all of this possibility. I'm absolutely convinced that we have to continue to monitor the human rights situation, including gender-based violence, of which honourable members have spoken. It has to be a priority for the European Union. That means, too, that we need to see regular political dialogue with the DRC authorities and also with civil society. We've got to continue to strengthen the security sector reform so we can ensure that we strengthen the capacity of the state. And that means that we impact on crucial sectors. We have to end impunity, end gender-based violence, end the illegal exploitation of natural resources, and support the building of governance. I do appreciate the continued support of the Parliament and pay tribute to the Electoral Observation Mission. But let me be clear that any future support to elections must depend on a credibility of the process implementation of recommendations that have been made by the mission, ownership by the government and a profound reform of the electoral system. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Colleagues, six motions for a resolution have been submitted. Now, in the light of the discussion, I don't imagine that these motions for, uh, for, for resolution are hugely different. But anyway, uh, this concludes the discussion and the vote will take place tomorrow. Now, in accordance with our agenda, we move on to the next point. This relates to a new strategy for Afghanistan. We'll be hearing a statement from the Vice President of the Commission and High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy. Thank you very much, very much Mr. President. Honourable Members, our overall strategy in Afghanistan remains to assist the Afghan government and the people to be able to run their own country. Ten years after 2001, we've embarked on what the Bonn Conference called last December a transformational decade, sustaining our engagement but changing its nature, putting Afghans more and more in control. There's been some real progress. More than half the country and half the people are already under Afghan security control, but equally insurgency remains a major threat to security across the country. I want to extend my personal condolences to the families of the four French soldiers who were killed on Saturday. Many challenges lie ahead. Afghanistan needs above all better governance. Without functioning politics and institutions that can be seen to be legitimate and effective, the transition won't succeed. But we also need better action against drugs, better management of public finances, better rule of law and better human rights protection. Continued and increased Afghan leadership will be vital to meeting these challenges. As the transition advances, it's right we look to the government of Afghanistan to set out its own long-term strategy for the country. We're working with the government, member states and others in the international community to put in place a strategic framework and agreed priorities. We will play our part. Provided the government of Afghanistan meets its obligations, the EU and member states have committed to enhance their assistance in Afghanistan for the next 10-year period. We've begun negotiations with the Afghan government on a new framework, the Cooperation Agreement for Partnership and Development, which will provide a legal basis for our cooperation in all civilian fields and assistance to Afghanistan. We expect that assistance from the EU budget will focus and where we can add most value on health, agriculture, governance and civilian policing. Mr. President, it's crucial that we have confidence that our assistance is used for the purposes for which it is intended to improve the lives of ordinary Afghans. And that's why we put such emphasis on the transparency of public finances. The Alachi report, and I pay tribute to 
Minister Mizalachi, who is here with us this evening, is right to insist that we must, and I quote, ensure transparency and accountability in relation to the assistance provided to the Afghan government, international organisations and NGOs. I've also read the allegations of mismanagement of an order trust fund by UNDP with grave concern and I've welcomed that a full investigation has been announced and we will await the conclusions of that investigation. Of course, we're now in the midst of three different conferences that will determine the relationship between the international community and the Afghan government. Last month, I attended the NATO summit in Chicago, where we set out plans to sustain and develop the Afghan National Security Forces. Both President Barroso and I highlighted the importance that we attach to civilian policing, and we announced that we would increase our funding for civilian police by 20% for the period 2011 to 13. And also that we intend to make an enhanced contribution post 2014. With both Afghan government and international colleagues, I emphasize the critical role that a uniformed police, distinct from the military, needs to play in any democratic society so people can have confidence in the rule of law and the fair administration of justice. Our UPOL training mission provides important support to this role, training police and improving the links between the police and justice. Cooperation with the NATO training mission is working well and as suggested in the report, we continue to aim for a more complementary division of tasks at both strategic and operational level. So we're currently undertaking a strategic review of UPOL and we'll reach conclusions on this in the summer. Counter-narcotics will remain an important element of our engagement. The problem of drugs cannot be tackled by crop substitution alone. It needs to be addressed in all our programs. On the 14th of June, we'll have an important conference in Kabul, which will focus on increased regional cooperation, advancing the Heart of Asia initiative that began in Istanbul last year. That meeting will highlight the important role countries in the region have to play in supporting conflict resolution, better security and development. The European Union has much experience on how to advance regional cooperation and we stand ready to offer that expertise and support to Afghanistan's neighbours. Honourable members will know I have just returned from Pakistan where I raised these issues with the Prime Minister, with the Foreign Minister and other leaders. I stress that while we would continue our engagement, Afghanistan's transition could not succeed without a constructive stance by its neighbours and we recognise Pakistan's crucial role in this respect. And then in, in Tokyo next month there will be the opportunity for the Afghan government to set out its development strategy for the country. In Tokyo the EU will make clear our commitment requires a corresponding commitment from the government of Afghanistan to make progress on the issues that matter to us electoral reform, public finance management, justice and human rights. Above all, we'll emphasise the focus needs to be on results. That means the political will to drive through difficult reforms. And it also means having the necessary security to allow development to take place, especially outside of Kabul. In line with the recommendations of the report, the EU will promote better coordination of donor support, a better alignment between the Afghan government and donors on priorities. We'll consider joint programming of EU and member states' assistance as circumstances allow. Honourable members, the EU and member states are making a real contribution to Afghanistan. The Afghan government is doing a lot, but it needs to do more to fulfil those key commitments, to hold credible and transparent elections, to improve the management of public finances, and to advance human rights, especially the rights of women and children. Mr. President, I want to end with a, role, with a word on the role of women in Afghanistan. I have met with representatives of Afghan women on several occasions and did so last in the margins of the Bonn Conference in December. Their stories and their leadership are remarkable. Afghan women leaders and civil society activists are very concerned that the gains and achievement women have made in the last decade are fragile. This will be a critical issue in any peace talks, but equally we must continue to focus on Afghanistan's governance 
and in particular the justice institutions. They are key to ensuring that Kabul is able to respond to the commitments they made in London, in Kabul and Bonn. And this is one area where the EU can and must play a strong role. I believe that in many respects the Afghan women hold the key to the future of their country and we need to do our utmost to support them as the transition unfolds. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of the EPP, I give the floor to Mr. Kassoulides, two minutes. Since the introduction of the counterinsurgency strategy in 2009 and the surge of troops by ISAF, a tactical success has been achieved where regions like Kandahar and Helmand are by Afghan standards secured and the number of police and army soldiers has doubled. A phased transition of security responsibility from ISAF to the Afghan National Security Forces is on its way <clears throat> and soon 75% of Afghanistan's population will be living in areas where the Afghan forces have taken the lead on security from ISAF, which will be completing its mission gradually by December 2014. In the meantime, we encourage an Afghan-led and Afghan-owned process of peace and reconciliation for a stable Afghanistan which breaks ties with international terrorism, complies with the Afghan constitution, including its provision of human and women's rights. The insurgent groups are not the only adversaries of Afghanistan. The narcotics network, the thriving corruption of officials and the criminal network are converging threats and mutually reinforcing. The Afghan police has to further develop and professionalize. It should evolve towards a credible law enforcement force for the protection of the civilian population and a system of the rule of law. The EU and NATO commitment for the stability and development of Afghanistan but also for its security goes beyond 2014 with perhaps a shift from combat mission to new training, advising and enhanced assistance along the lines you have just described, Madam High Representative. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker on behalf of the SND group is Mr. Blackie for two minutes, please. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Ashton, I carefully listened to your uh, statement and I'm not happy about uh, what you said. Uh, you spoke uh, as the report on Afghanistan by this parliament as it was released a couple of weeks ago. We are talking about a report that has been approved by this parliament in December 2010. So I would have listened would have prefer to hear from you something about the implementation of the report in one year and a half. You spoke a lot about things to be done in Afghanistan. Some of them are absolutely uh, reasonable and right, but you did not mention two major issues that were contained in my report. The issue of the peace process, what to do with the peace process in Afghanistan is the crucial political point for the future of the country, particularly now that the military occupation is ending. And the second point was the narcotic issue. The only reference you did was to that no uh, crop substitution alone cannot uh, solve the drug problem. Of course, but no one, no one has any, any dissent from this statement. The report contained a very detailed call for a five years plan to eliminate opium production in Afghanistan through alternative development, a plan that has never been done in Afghanistan and it was urgent two years ago and is more urgent now that opium production is still con continue to increase. We developed also a, a relationship with the Russian Federation who is along with Europe the major victim of Afghan opium. We had here the uh, anti-narcotics responsible for Russian Federation. We developed ideas and plans. Russia was ready also to fund, to co-fund with the EU a plan to eliminate opium production. Nothing happened. We never heard from your office any, any answer from, from, for that. This is the reason why I'm not happy. Thank you. Grazie a lei. And as next speaker. 
We have uh, Mrs. Nicolai for the ALDE E group for two minutes, please. Thank you, Chair. Madam Ashton, I'm happy with your discourse. I'm not happy with Afghanistan future. Uh, according to Lisbon Summit, the SAF mission will be finished in 2014. Uh, we analyzed 10 uh, years on partnership between uh, international community and uh, Afghanistan. What's happened in these uh, 10 years? We can report, and uh, all of us will report some achievement uh, in economics, uh, in uh, freedom, in human rights, uh, in women rights, uh, in health care. Uh, but uh, these uh, achievements are uh, enough uh, for considering Afghanistan a stable and a democratic uh, country. Is Afghanistan today a country who uh, certainly have a democratic future? Uh, if I look to the NATO summit, uh, where we see a lot of optimistic approach, uh, I believe that we must uh, look behind of this uh, optimistic approach. And behind of this optimistic approach, we see still an increase of uh, drug uh, production in Afghanistan, an increase of corrup corruption, uh, a widespread unemployment in the country. Uh, I am really sure that the women can play an active role for the democratization, but uh, from lo how long uh, the women uh, will be allowed to play this uh, role after the withdrawal of the uh, ISAF mission? Uh, I am afraid that uh, our uh, strategy for the future Afghanistan is not a realistic one and uh, it's really difficult to, to be implemented. Uh, certainly, we need a strong uh, partnership, not only with the European Union and Afghanistan, but I believe also with the United States and Afghanistan. Uh, unfortunately, uh, if I come back to the NATO summit, I see one chair left. It's the Putin place. Uh, maybe Russia can play an active role in the area. Thank you very much. The next speaker on behalf of the Greens for a minute and a half is, is Mrs. Kiel Nielsen. Merci. Thank you. Madam, the uh, NATO summit uh, has taken note of the decision to uh, leave Afghanistan, but it also marks the uh, failure of the uh, uh, Western countries in Afghanistan. When we co compare uh, the views from NATO, etc., with what's coming from the NGOs in Afghanistan, you get the impression we're talking about two different countries. The Taliban is coming back and uh, is taking over throughout the whole of the country and is taking revenge on those who collaborated with the Westerners. I'm thinking, of course, of women. I remember in 2001, the uh, cause of Afghan women was used to justify a in military intervention that the population hadn't called for. Following the bombardments and destruction, they were promised reconstruction, peace and democracy. But it's been a failure. According to uh, Minister Efti Kari, six million children are suffering extreme poverty, uh, mistreatment and violence. And under the pressure of the Taliban, the schools are being uh, burnt, teachers killed and uh, many girls schools have had to close down in 11 provinces. Young people are fleeing the country to come to the promising West. It's pointless to uh, mention the welcome or non-welcome which is reserved for them in Europe. Shameful. Pakistan, Iran have decided to uh, turn out hundreds of thousands of uh, Afghans who had gone to their countries given the uh, commitment adopted by the EU vis-a-vis -vis the uh, people of Afghanistan. Are we ready in the uh, uh, Council to adopt a uh, plan to assist refugees? Are we ready to welcome the uh, threatened teachers, the, those who uh, advocate women's rights, all of those people? Thank you very much. Our next speaker on behalf of the ECR group uh, for one minute is Mr. Piotrowski. Thank you very much, President. Ladies and gentlemen, if the European Union has an ambition of being an 
global player building its common international policy, it should pay particular attention to what we call as black holes on the geopolitical map of the world. Afghanistan is one of such black holes. It was destroyed by many wars. It was associated with terrorism, drug trafficking, human trafficking and violence. We, should we build democracy? Civil society, well, in the European Union invests a lot in terms of money in Afghanistan, and it would be good to hear from Madame Ashton how much is spent every year. And the problems of Afghanistan seem remote. Yes, Afghanistan is thousands of kilometers away, but we all live in a global village and we all suffer the consequences of the Afghan crisis in the form of influx of immigrants, if, and if nothing else. European Union should use the experience of some member states, such as Poland, who has good knowledge and who has been involved in the process of stabilization in the region. Thank you. Herzlichen Dank. Thank you very much. And now, on behalf of the EFD group, uh, for one minute, uh, Mr. Vosovic has the floor. Thank you very much. President, Afghanistan is a conflict that has been lost by the West for so many years of our involvement. We did not win the support of the civil society and we did not manage to combat the insurgents. Even though we have a consensus between the EU and the United States and the support of Russia, we were not able to cut the Taliban off the bases. So realistically speaking, we only control some of the country's territory. What can we do in such a tragic situation? The President of France is announcing the withdrawal of forces, and this seems to be little strategy. Maybe we should try to make sure that terrorists have no funds for their activities. Union, European Union should also invest funds in encouraging farmers to stop planting the plants which produce narcotics. The water management and agriculture need further investment, otherwise the country can turn into the next Somalia, torn between fighting tribes. Als nächster hat das Wort Thank you very much. The next speaker on behalf of the GUE group for one minute is Mr. Mayer. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Mrs. Ashton. I'd agree with colleagues who suggest that basically what we see is a failure. We've got to acknowledge that fact over and above any NATO image campaigns, which, is, which are just PR campaigns. We really don't know how the peace process stands. I mean, what's going to happen in 2015? Will uh, Afghanistan be more or less Taliban in 2015? Will there be more or less poverty? Will there be more or less corruption? We simply do not know. We don't know of any alternative uh, for the opium fields. No information about that. Neither do we know what the withdrawal plan is. It would seem that Pakistan doesn't want to negotiate any potential withdrawal. So the scenario is that over and above propaganda, all we know is that 53% we have we have 53% more armed police force. But that's about all we know. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. I don't see Mr. Griffin in the chamber. I don't think he's hiding, so I can assume he's not here. The same applies to Mr. Brock. Uh, I don't think he would be able to hide. So that brings me to Mr. Rucek uh, for two minutes, please. Well, I haven't hidden, Mr. President. Madam High Representative, the military presence of Allied forces is coming to the end, and I think it's right, because it's time for the Afghan people, it's time for the Afghan leaders to run their own country. The Afghans should have ownership of their country. But of course we shouldn't repeat the mistake that was done after the end of Soviet intervention to leave Afghan, Afghanistan, Afghani people to their own destiny. 
we should be helping. We should be helping with the, with the international aid. We should be helping with the, with the training of police, with uh, continu continuation of preparing the Afghani to run their country. But I think we should also have an alternative st strategy as far as the economy is concerned. We talk a lot of about narcotics trade. But did we develop an alternative in the last 10 years? Afghan is potentially not a poor country. Afghan is a rich country on mineral resources, on natural resources. So I would like to see, for instance, greater involvement of, of our countries, of, of the member states, into exploiting the uh, Afghan natural resources. If the Chinese can be involved there, why cannot we? As far as the, 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 the struggle against, against the narcotic trafficking is concerned, I think, again, we should cooperate with our allies. We should cooperate with neighbors of Afghanistan. The Al-Laki report mentioned Russia. I think we didn't do enough as far as the cooperation with Russia is concerned. I would also propose let's cooperate more intensively than it's the case now with Iran. Because also the, the Iranian police forces, the, the Iranian use uh, pays very heavy price for narcotics trade. And through this approach, we could also develop you know, closer, co uh, more confidence with Iran. So, in other words, our president is over, but we shouldn't leave Afghanistan to, just to, to its own destiny. We should be helping. Thank you. Thank you very much. Als nächster Redner. The next speaker for one and a half minutes is Mr. Stadler. President. Mr. President, the, I, the agenda says a new strategy for Afghanistan, Afghanistan, but what you have presented, Madam, is, is not new at all. It is a fact that the West has failed once again in Afghanistan, and that is because we don't know uh, how Mr. Karzai or his successor, if he manages to survive, will get the Taliban under control. What has this mission cost us and, and uh, what success have we had? That there's been no end put to the terrorists or to the Taliban and uh, drugs production is growing. Uh, X thousand people killed and they're described as collateral damage, sometimes by the very people that in the preceding debate were deploring uh, the, the deaths of uh, civilians in, in Syria, but the same kind of deaths in Afghanistan are being dismissed as collateral damage. This is cynicism. We are going to have to learn once again that to the cultural political sovereignty uh, of other countries has to be uh, better respected as a, as a basis for cooperation. We will not be able to permanently uh, impose our systems on other peoples as in uh, colonial times. I think we're going to have to learn that humility and in Afghanistan. Thank you very much. The next speaker for a minute and a half is Mr. Lizek. Thank you very much, President. Madam High Representative, uh, well, uh, I'm pleased that uh, someone has uh, not been present. Uh, that means I could get my um, speech uh, earlier. And I have to be there on time for the match between Poland and Russia. However, coming back to Afghanistan, I have one comment. The Polish government, Minister Sikorski, said that we have entered Afghanistan together and we should leave together. So I have one comment concerning other countries. It is really pity that the current politics and electoral campaigns are the decisive factors which decide that we are not going to leave together from Afghanistan because some will leave earlier. Of course, the situation is still very fragile. We do not know what the future will bring. We have two years now to prepare Afghanistan for totally um, self-sufficient governance. And yes, what Madame High Representative has said is very important. Uh, trainings. Uh, Mm, advice, those soft measures might actually make the difference between normality and chaos. We have to find a way to make this country 
work in terms of economy, what should they produce, for example, what should they export. These are crucial elements. But of course, developmental aid is equally important. Uh, it should be a wise developmental aid without any waste of money. The next speaker is Mr. Behrman for two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. I thought it was one and a half minutes. That's quite and I have less. Voorzitter. Mr. President, Ms. Uh, Lady Ashton, when uh, the American troops leave Afghanistan in 2014, uh, will the country be able to take its uh, fate into its own hands? It doesn't look that way at the moment. First of all, the Karzai government is weak. Uh, it's uh, fraught with uh, internal divisions and corruption uh, and uh, they're having difficulties in bringing about reconciliation, nor is the Afghan uh, army a able yet to take over the role of uh, the UN troops. And uh, uh, negotiations in between the parties are much too dominated by Washington with their own American agenda, and that is not leading to uh, success. Uh, this conflict can't end without a negotiated political agreement, but the Karzai government uh, is not really able to make much of a contribution to that. The International Crisis Group made a good uh, suggestion, uh, which was to allow a, a UN team of uh, mediators accepted by all, all parties to provide a, a new start to negotiations. I'm looking forward uh, with interest to Catherine Ashton's uh, reaction to that proposal. Perhaps the EU can insist on the importance of this. The role of the EU has to be political, more than just material, more than just offering training of police officers, more than just supplying the financial assistance that we have to obviously keep on giving. In any case, the EU has to continue to support the strengthening of Afghan uh, democracy in Afghan institutions, decentralization of power, strengthening of local authorities. This is essential, together with the fight against corruption, to achieve uh, a credible uh, administration after 2014. Thank you. Well. Thank you. The next speaker has the floor for one and a half minutes. Uh, Mrs. Schriefler. Thanks very much, Mr. President, Madam High Representative. Ten years after the beginning of uh, military intervention in Afghanistan, we have to conclude that the situation is extremely uncertain on the ground. The efforts of the International Society have not been have not met with success. They have not uh, stopped the Taliban insurrection, and neither is there peace and stability in the country. Lost four soldiers in a suicide attack in the province of Kapisa. This strategy quite clearly shows that there's no light at the end of the tunnel in Afghanistan. Now, I'm worried about the withdrawal of uh, troops in 2012. Tactically, it's going to be diff difficult, and our, our allies see it as disloyal. I'd like to congratulate the European military have done an excellent job in training the Afghan army. The European Parliament in December 2010 adopted a very clear report on the strategy to be followed in Afghanistan and it focuses on four priority areas, particularly training of the police, coordination of international aid and the elimination of poppy growing. Now these are initiatives I fully support but I think that, that the international community has to beware Beware leaving Afghanistan too early. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, madame. Uh Thank you very much, madam. Now, after the list of speakers, we will proceed to the catch the eye procedure. So far, I have only seen two people asking for the floor. I don't want to force you. Um, Mr. Griffin will take you as well. So, first of all, Mrs. Kohola. Then Mr. Semke and then Mr. Griffin. Mrs. Kohola, one minute. Thank you, President. In 2010, we voted on Afghanistan's strategy for the EU. Now we can see that only 20% of the EU aid actually reaches the people who need aid. International aid must be reformed. We have to get rid of the growing of uh, drugs and give better training to police and the army. The Afghanistan strategy is now t 10 years old and we have not been able to help the Afghan people in the way that we should have helped them. 
the situation in the country is still desperate and it's only getting worse since the Taliban has started its attacks again this spring. Afghanistan is supposed to organize elections 2014 or 2015. The country is not ready for these elections. The EU must make everything that must make sure that the Karzai government will be able to change the election system before those elections. The EU would be an excellent uh, companion that can help to bring about these fair and democratic elections. The next speaker for one minute is Mr. Zemke. Thank you very much. Uh, what was mentioned by Baroness Ashton, Ashton is certainly right as regards the direction, the shift in the European Union's policy or the policy of the West is correct. Uh, we no longer want to replace the Afghan authorities. We want to support them. We want to make sure that they feel responsible for the security and development of the country. I would like to draw your attention to one opportunity which we do not really use enough. European Union should open a special scholarship program for Afghan youth and here I mean in particular training for future specialists in such fields as medicine, the water management, geology and I believe this would bring very good results. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker for one minute is Mr. Griffin. Mr. Chairman, in May, President Barroso bragged of the EU and its member states throwing 1.2 billion euros a year down the Afghan drain. But 1.2 billion euros is only a fraction of the true cost. Britain's contribution alone to the Afghan farce, according to the British Ministry of Defence, is already over 18 billion pounds, plus 3 billion in aid plus 4 billion in equipment that is to be left behind, plus 5 billion that will be screwed out of the British taxpayer to run Afghanistan for a further 30 years. Most important, 417 British dead are the highest price of all, and the most obscene, because it's a war that has nothing to do with Britain. We should bring our troops home at once and put the neocon crooks who sent them there on trial as war criminals. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker on the list would be Baroness Ashton. Please have the floor. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, and let me begin by saying that uh, those in this House who believe that we need to commit to Afghanistan will recognize that this is a long-term commitment and that the stability and security, not just of the region, but way beyond the region, is partly dependent on the success that Afghanistan can make and the people who can be supported into a better future. There is no doubt too that this is a commitment that is difficult at times, that requires us to continue to push hard on ensuring that what we believe should be done by the Afghan government is indeed done and that we ensure that our resources are well spent. The European Union spends 200 million euros a year in Afghanistan on a range of different programs to try and support stability, economic growth, the role of women, healthcare, rural development, a whole range of different projects, and especially to support the building of the civilian police force, so essential to the future of a state when justice and the rule of law can be not only talked about, but be seen to be effective across the country. And in addition, a, mil a billion euros is spent by member states across the European Union to try and support these efforts. And there are good news stories. Unfortunately, it's very difficult sometimes to understand the positive side of what is happening in Afghanistan. But we've seen health care improve, infant mortality going down. Many, many, many girls in school finally getting the education they Access to health care at a primary level, which used to be less than 10%, is now more than 60%. These are important. 
alongside many of the other ways in which we can try and support this country into the future. And I'm sorry that Mr. Alachi feels disappointed in this. I know that you met with our Chief Operating Officer, I think a few weeks ago, and I hope that was a useful meeting. What I would just say on the couple of issues that I know are of particular importance to you. We are supportive of the African process and consideration, but we talked about it. You have to be clear on this, that we need respect for the Afghan constitution, including its human rights provisions. I believe that's indispensable, and I believe you agree with me on that. Because only then will this process be truly inclusive, representing the legitimate interests of all the people of Afghanistan, regardless of gender, regardless of social status. And we said in Bonn that we must see the region respect and support the peace process and its outcome. So the Istanbul process is underway and in a few days the Ministerial Regional Conference in Kabul should hopefully provide some real concrete evidence of the growing understanding from the neighbours in Afghanistan that they must have got a lot to gain from a sovereign, stable and united Afghanistan. I know too that the proposals on uh, eradication of opium cultivation was to set aside 100 million euros and to create an agency with its own budget and staff. But what we have chosen to do is to try and back the uh, structures that we've actually got in place on the ground, to try and work with the Ministry of Counter Narcotics, the Ministry of Rural Development and the Ministry of Interior, because in truth, trying to eradicate the cultivation of drugs is about a whole raft of programs that means rural development, it means health, it means law enforcement and it means border management. And what we also know, of course, is that the areas where you have greater persistence in opium poppy production are those that have got no, neither security nor governance. So not areas where we're able to operate nor indeed will be able to pursue in the way that I know you'd wish to see. The commitment, though, is there. We have got to try and find ways to tackle uh, the real issues that stand in the way of Afghanistan going forward. But I do say to you that I think we have to recognise that this is a long-term commitment and a commitment that moves us beyond 2014 into the work we need to do on development. And if we don't, I believe the consequences will be enormous, not just for the people of Afghanistan, but actually for us too. Thank you very much to the High Representative and many thanks to uh, the uh, members who had enough respect to stay until the end of uh, the reply. The debate on that subject is now closed and um, the next item on the agenda is the uh, statement by the Vice President of the Commission, High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy situation in Tibet. For this debate we won't have a catch to the eye procedure. So without further ado, I will give the floor straight away to the High Representative. The floor. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Defence and promotion of human rights around the world is a key component of our foreign policy. In this context, we follow closely the human rights situation in Tibet. We consider that our human rights dialogue with China is an essential part of the EU-China relationship. And in this context, committed to engage with China to improve the situation on the ground. The European Union is concerned by the deterioration of the situation in Tibet, illustrated by the way of self-immolations and by clashes between police and local people since the beginning of the year. In recent days, we've been particularly concerned about the use of mass arrests and detentions taking place in the Tibetan Autonomous following self-immolations in Lhasa, as well as reports that the area has been closed to foreigners. Honourable Members, some 37 self-immolations of Tibetans have occurred in China since 2011. These have been concentrated in, in Sichuan province, but have also taken place in other Tibetan populated areas, where increasing restrictions on religious activities seem to have given rise to a surge of frustration and protest among Tibetans. Over the last three years, an increasing number of Tibetan intellectuals and cultural figures have faced criminal charges or been imprisoned. We are worried by restrictions on expression of Tibetan identity and freedom of expression in Tibet. 
the EU has taken note that the five-year plans adopted by the Chinese authorities in January and March 2011 include an expansion of hydropower, railways, mining and tourism across the Tibetan plateau. We welcome China's wish to raise the living standards of the Tibetan population. However,